Number six on the fundamental truths is this. We believe and practice two ordinances. Now, when I say to ordinances, what does that mean? What, what do you mean to ordinances of the church? Ordinances just simply means this. It's something ordained or decreed by God. When we say we practice two ordinances of the church. And so the two ordinances that we practice in the church is this. Number one is water baptism. Water baptism by immersion. In other words, we do not sprinkle in the church. And we say, Pastor, why, why don't you believe in sprinkling? Because we literally take what the scriptures have said when Jesus came up out of the water. In other words, in order for Jesus to come up out of the water, he had to be in under the water. And so we, be we believe in submersion. And it really represents this. And, and water baptism is simply the meaning of this. When we water baptize, after somebody gives their heart to the Lord, accept what Jesus did on the cross, gave his blood, they, it is an outward sign of an inward change. It is letting everybody know what Christ did for us, of how Jesus has forgiven us of our sins. I am letting everyone know publicly what Jesus has done, and I am grateful for that. So it is an outward sign of an inward change. You're letting everybody know that I'm unashamed of what Jesus has done in my heart and in my life. And then not only that, um, I'm letting the Lord know as well. Uh, God, I'm unashamed of what you've done. So publicly, I want to tell everyone. And so here it is, filling in the blank, water baptism by immersion or underneath right there after repenting of one's sins and receiving Christ's gift of salvation. So we believe that that's the first ordinance that we practice. So I, I urge you, if you've never been water baptized, or I'll say this, we encourage a lot of our people, um, maybe they say, well, pastor, I was baptized in an early age, but it, it really didn't mean anything to me, or I didn't fully understand it. I encourage you this. I believe what Revelation says, that sometimes we need to do our first works over again. And we've had several adults say, you know, I've been baptized, but it really didn't. I didn't understand it. I didn't fully, it brought meaning to my life. And you say, well, I want to be rebaptized. That's okay. We believe that you can do that. If you've never been baptized, water baptized as a Christian, we would love to um, do that with you. Just let us know. We'd love to work that out then too as well. It's commanded in Scripture. Uh, the ordinance of baptism by immersion is commanded in Scripture. All who repent and believe, uh, even Scripture say, on Christ as Savior and as Lord are to be baptized. They, they declare to the world that they have died with Christ, and that's what that means. When that old man goes under, and that's why we believe really in immersion, that you're representing that the old man is dead, and then when you come up, the new man is alive in Jesus Christ. So again, uh, Romans 6, 4 declares that. What a great scripture to describe water baptism. And it says this, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So that's the first one. The second one is of the ordinance that we practice. We practice communion, holy communion. There it is, fill in the blank. Holy communion or the Lord's Supper as a symbolic remembrance of Christ's suffering and death for our salvation. The Lord's Supper, consisting of the elements, bread, and the fruit of the vine uh, that we use as grape juice is the symbol expressing our, our sharing the divine nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a memorial. It really is. Uh, the scripture says, this do in remembrance of me. Uh, do this until I come. And so that's what we do. We usually practice that. And I'll tell you, I've had the question in this class. I know we've talked about communion. Well, how frequent, how often do we do it? A lot of times you'll find that we at least practice it at least once per quarter. What I don't want to do is getting into, and I am not against churches that do this every week, so I want you to know that. But I don't want it to be a religious act. And if we're not careful, it can be that way. In fact, Paul had to correct the Corinthians when they were um, doing the elements or communion into the Lord, and it turned into a ruckus, a party. And God says, you're, you're really um, treating this uh, wrongly, and it should be holy. 
So we have open communion in the church, anybody that wants to take communion, but we have a time that whereby we don't want to take it as the scriptures say uh, and really talk about it in 1 Corinthians uh, 11 unworthily because we, we want to have our hearts clean. And I, I, a lot of times, many of you have heard me say this, examine your heart, make sure there's nothing, no sin in your heart before you take the elements. And again, the bread representing the body that was broken for us and the juice that we drink represents the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary for all of us. And so, and just appreciative of what Christ did on the cross for being you. And it's a humbling time. It's a humbling experience. And uh, so we want to practice that on a regular basis then at the church. So those are the two elements that we do practice within the church. Number seven of our fundamental beliefs that we take is we believe the baptism in the Holy Spirit is a special experience following salvation that empowers believers for witnessing and effective service just as it did in the New Testament times. Oh, I love this. And I really believe this as we dive in on this doctrine is that every believer, and we're going to talk about that in a moment, is entitled to receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit to again uh, empower you for witnessing. And it's one of the four cardinal doctrines that we were talking about. Remember salvation, Holy Spirit, healing rapture. So again, all believers are entitled. If you've accepted Jesus as Savior and as Lord of your life, you're entitled to and you need to ardently expect and earnestly seek the promise of the Father, the baptism in the Holy Spirit with fire according to the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, remember when Jesus was getting ready to ascend into heaven, he said, now go and tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise. If it wasn't important, Jesus wouldn't have never asked those that were watching him that very day to go in Jerusalem and wait for the promise and be filled with, or be filled with power, be endued with power from on high. And so if it was necessary, and I want you to know that, if it was necessary for the early believers, how necessary it is for us. And I believe this. I know the enemy has tried to come along and said, you know, well, it's not for me. And I just got to say this. If 120 went into the upper room and were filled, it said that, that all of them were filled. It didn't say 110 came out and were baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and the rest uh, that was in there, the 10, you know, uh, more that were in there were not filled. No, every one of them were filled in that day. And it's, it's a picture to us that God still wants to fill every man. And I believe that that seeks the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, like the day of Pentecost. And so he's still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he baptized back then and healed back then and saved back then, guess what? He still does the same then today and wants to do that. So this was the normal life. And it was the experience of, uh, of the early Christian church. And it, with it comes that endowment of power of the Holy Spirit for life and service and the bestowment of the gifts uh, and their uses in the work of the ministry. And many of you that are, are attending, you've seen the gifts of the Holy Spirit in work, not just with tongues and interpretation in the church. There's been gifts of healing and, um, you know, the different nine gifts that uh, are referred to in Scripture then too. Acts 1.8 says this, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses. It's just not to be baptized in another heavenly tongue, uh, and that is a plus. And we need the Spirit to pray through us. And we're going to go a little bit more into the next one on that to give us that heavenly language to pray the will of the Father inside of us. Because Romans 8 says, For we know not as we ought to pray, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. I want to pray the will of the Father. The only way that that happens is through the Holy Spirit praying in that heavenly language. And I do that daily. I pray in the Holy Spirit daily. I pray in English daily and I pray in the Holy Spirit daily because Jude says it builds up our most holy faith when we pray in the Holy Spirit daily then too. That's very important. We pray with an understanding and we pray in the Spirit. And uh, we're encouraged to do both. 
Um, but we are encouraged with that. The Holy Spirit filling us with that power is not only to have that personal prayer language, but it is to give us power and boldness to witness. There it is. To be witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost parts of the earth. So again, that's the why God desires to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Notice that this experience is distinct and it's subsequent to the experience of the new birth. Hallelujah. And so we talk about that. Even uh, Paul even asked and referred to John's believers. If you want to know the scriptures there, he said, have you heard of the uh, Holy Spirit and the baptism? No, we've heard of John, through John and we, we've been baptizing John's, you know, with the salvation, but we've never heard of this Holy Spirit. Remember that Acts talks about that. And so again, they, they were saved. They've asked Jesus to come into their life, but they weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues. And so again, it gives us proof that uh, God desires to baptize all. So, and so this experience is distinct. And then your, your sheet says in front of you, with the baptism in the Holy Spirit comes experience such as this, an overflowing fullness of the Spirit of God. And there's scriptures right there. A deepened reverence for the Lord. When you're baptized, a deepened reverence of the Holy Spirit. You're, there's a deepened reverence for God, and then see a, an intensified consecration to God, a dedication to his work. And then not only that, there is a move of a more active love for Christ and his word for the lost like never before. I want everything that God has for me. And so that is the reason why we talk about uh, one of the one of our, our do core doctrines here, even in the assemblies of God and as a church. And then number eight, while we're we're already talking about that, we believe, and I've already kind of referred to this in uh, doctrine number seven or fundamental number seven. We believe the initial physical evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is speaking in other tongues. See, there was a pattern that was given in that day. Let me go ahead and finish because I know you're filling out the, the sheet there. Uh, we believe the initial physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues as experienced on the day, there it is, of Pentecost and referenced, this is very important, throughout Acts and the epistles. And so Acts 2, 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Not only that, but we see multiple times that it was the pattern that like Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 19, uh, other places in Acts, that when they were filled, they began to speak with other tongues. And I want you to understand that, that that is a pattern. And that's very important that we see that it wasn't just a one time happening. It happened many times. So we take that as uh, the initial physical evidence is the baptism in the Holy Spirit.